Time for a brief history lesson, my friends. Recently, during the BlizzCon line Q&A, Blizzard mentioned that they're looking at the faction imbalance and what they can do to intervene in it and it's a major point of topic in their offices now as a result of that a lot of conversation has been kicked up because they mentioned it's now a social issue it's a community issue and they're looking for social ways of making this work the problem is that is true as of right now but it's not really how this originated and a lot of people are commenting on this and obviously a lot of people started much later in the game than many others and may not understand how this faction imbalance actually came to be and how blizzard took a role in making it as it is now so let's get some things clear is there a huge faction imbalance amongst the player base not really actually it's pretty even uh it's about 60 40 55 depending on which day you check it's very very close however what is true is if you want to do higher end content in this game you tend to want to be hoard now you can go back a very long way and see that that has generally always been the case since around the cataclysm if we go back to vanilla it's pretty even stevens okay as we go through the burning crusade it's pretty even and at the time there were questions specifically raised about racial imbalance Certainly when it came to things like priests in vanilla having access to fear ward, but we had bigger things on our plate, such as the alliance getting paladins and the horde having shamans. That was all, of course, remedied in the Burning Crusade, but still there was things like Gift of the Naru and extra chance to hit, which gave the alliance some advantages. The horde generally having better DPS ones with Blood Fury and, of course, uh, Berserking for the trolls. Now, you might think, why was it not made a bigger issue then? And that's because for a long time, Blizzard had a really good system of profession-only bonuses. And generally speaking, they were far more of a, of a bonus than your racial was. A lot of racials were pretty garbage, such as Torrens having base health increase, even though the game was adding thousands of stamina to the game. So base health being your character without any gear, relative to how much stamina you were adding via gear, it made very little difference. There were a lot of dead racials. Now... These profession bonuses were actually very, very good. Herbalists got things like on-use haste cooldowns. Blacksmiths, for example, could have extra sockets in their gear. These developed over the course of expansions, of course, and weren't always exactly the same or anything. But it was a good bonus to have because players could choose which ones they wanted to have. Of course, min-maxers would choose whatever they considered to be the best. But you get the idea that it didn't cost you any money in order to change your profession it was just something you had to do in game and racials became kind of secondary to that and we kind of enjoyed a period where it's relatively even now i say relatively even because you can go back a very long way and what you will see is things like the horde even to this day if we look at the top 20 kills of raid bosses for example three quarters of them will be horde and about one quarter alliance there's some differentiation but it generally remains around 75 percent to 25 percent the big difference has occurred in everything after that, with a major, major shift towards the Horde. It used to be you would see a relatively even mix once you went past that top 20 all the way to the top 1000. But in the modern era, and I'm sure many of you have noticed it, if you look at things like when do uh, when does Cross Realm Mythic open because the Alliance and Horde Top 100 Hall of Fame has been completed, the Horde generally do it considerably faster than the Alliance, and in fact can take up to months after the Horde have finished for the alliance to get those 100 kills so how did we get there well as i said racials were a topic of conversation but they were generally the same kind of mutterings you would see about say arenas or battlegrounds where the horde always lose the alliance always lose backwards and forwards depending on your realms and all those kinds of environments but a big factor here is the steady decline of the amount of players simply playing the game since wrath of the lich king wrath of the lich king is when it hit its peak and since then there have been just less and less and less players actually taking part in world of warcraft this causes servers to die it causes guilds to fall apart it causes all kinds of problems the next big point got brought up during the Cataclysm beta. This is where you need to be aware of the introduction of the Worgen. Paragon, who were the big champions of PvE at the time, raised a very important point that the very first iteration of Darkflight, which was the Worgen racial, was so strong and so powerful that guilds were going to have to be forced to go alliance and that would create a faction imbalance. Now, I know that probably seems crazy to you that a faction imbalance would tilt heavily towards the alliance, but that's what Paragon were warning about. I wish you could find that post, but I can't seem to get it just now, but I know it existed. And they were right, and Blizzard pushed back. They were like, okay, we don't want to create a massive faction imbalance here, and that's what's going to happen. These guys are not 
lying about what they're saying is dark flight having that ability to move so quickly is going to be a big problem and the raiders are all going to start shifting over there and that could have a domino effect throughout the player base so they nerfed it and rebalanced it around and things maintained the same up until up until mists of pandaria now as you probably are aware during wrath of the lich king and cataclysm and mr pandaria blizzard were heavily pushing the idea of having a, a big raid tier like a 25 man or a 20 man and a 10 man tier now i'm not here to discuss the 10 man situation i'm sure you guys have had that conversation to death and it's really not relevant to what we're talking about today but let's think about what actually happened there mr pandaria in particular was the death of large guilds Lots and lots and lots of 10 mans sprung up as 25 mans dissipated quickly because those 25 mans were breaking up into 10 mans. What did we say earlier? There's about 75% horde guilds to alliance. So there was twice as many breaking down horde guilds moving into 10 man, which meant the amount of 10 man guilds were nearly all horde. They went horde and horde and horde and horde and horde. As these big guilds crumbled, they were getting double the amount of horde guilds as they were getting the alliance. This meant a heavy, heavy sway over to that we'll point out once again though that the good guilds even in 10 man was still showing 75 percent horde to 25 percent alliance in that top 20 bracket it was in the after that bracket that we were starting to see a huge huge swathe of horde guilds starting to rise now when it came to walls of draenor blizzard wanted to put a stop to this it was killing their large raid scene they enjoy having the large raid scene in world of warcraft and they continue to enjoy that to this day there is something epic about having more than 10 players right that's something that does exist so they decided to get rid of this 25 man and 10 man split not only because they couldn't balance it but it was also killing the entire 25 man scene and blizzard didn't want that to happen so when it came to worlds of draenor they made two substantial changes one they're going to get rid of that system and this is where they made the fateful error they rebalanced the racials and simultaneously removed profession bonuses from the game this was a big big problem and something that many of the player base cried out about because what was about to happen was incredibly obvious let's think about this on the 10 man side which are no longer able to raid 10 man there are considerably more horde guilds massive amounts of them and new guilds have been sprung up every single day we had also seen during mr pandaria beta that the big alliance players notably method had also moved over to the horde and we were hearing that lots and lots of guilds were moving over to the horde because that's where the better player was players were that's where the more populated realms were as now we're seeing the decline of the player base and you can see all these little pinpricks of the balloon causing it to burst blizzard did have a chance here to fix this they could have instead of dropping profession bonuses instead kept with the profession bonuses and changed the racials to be something very thematic and less combat effective than what they actually are and this is what many of us including myself requested at the time why did they not do that and the answer very likely is greed swapping factions swapping races is very 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 profitable for blizzard it's a very simple process and if you go on the ptr you can copy your character entirely for free twenty thousand times in a matter of seconds it's a very, very simple automated process for Blizzard that they are charging $20 or so far. And they make a lot of money off people doing that. And the likelihood is that this decision was made for profit because it earns them so much money. So instead of having an in-game way of controlling extra little perks and bonuses for your character, they took that away and instead rebalanced the racials to try and promote more combat effectiveness of everybody's racial even them out instead of just dwindling them down now personally i'm a big fan of racials but i do think racials should be a non-combat thing and if they are a combat thing extremely minor unfortunately that is not the case and significant bonuses can be had from racials even today despite it being one of the weaker aspects of the classes they are more balanced though which is again coming back to this social issue so in worlds of draenor we had the unstoppable rise of the horde guilds why with no more 10 man a lot of these 10 mans had to start cluing up and gathering together to form new guilds or they started sucking up all the player base what that meant is for players across the game there was far more opportunity to continue raiding or get into raiding if you were on the horde it also helps that super realms started to be formed if you look now at the realm populations across world of warcraft there are very few servers that cows most of the player base because 
we simply have that huge decline in players, so people have all gravitated to places where there are lots and lots of guilds. Not strange to see one server housing some, like, 20 or 30 of the top few hundred guilds all on one realm, and then everyone else being spread out around. So we had all these guilds recruiting everybody, more opportunity, more people swapping over, more big guilds swapping over to the Horde, because it made absolute sense. That kind of leads us to where we are now with a dramatic amount more higher end play taking place on the horde and what can we do about it now what the answer to that is i don't know and i will point out there are pockets where this doesn't count like oceanic the french servers in particular have a reasonably good mix the spanish servers have a reasonably good mix but for the most part the general mindset of everybody playing world of warcraft right now is that if you want to have a chance at raiding you want to have more opportunities you want to have a chance at higher mythic plus you generally want to go to the Horde. And the racials are important, but not enough to swap away from the access of resources, which is players. There is nothing more vital to a guild's success than having access to players and fresh recruits, which means it goes hand in hand with being over on the Horde side. Now, what Blizzard doesn't want is to keep seeing the shift, the siphoning of Alliance players over to the Horde. As I said, right now it's pretty equal. Do we know how many of those players are being played? We don't know. There could be a ton of Alliance characters out there. I have Alliance characters. I don't play them, but they no doubt pop up in their statistics. All I wanted to do with this was really give you a recount of how we got here. It's not something that the players just decided. There was a chance to fix this earlier on, and it didn't take place. The writing was very clearly on the wall as to where this was going. Well, that's it, guys. For those of you who missed out on all those moments, that is a little brief history of how the faction imbalance came to be. Right now, it is a social issue. The racials are no longer strong enough to justify being one way or the other, realistically, in terms of making a big difference. There are some exceptions, but overall, it's not. But why now, on Earth, would you intentionally move to a side that has considerably less resources? I will point out, though, as one final note, is the top guilds who generally lead the way on these things, they don't care. As we saw with Castle Nathria, when there was even a remote chance that Dwarven Stoneform was going to be the overwhelming, amazing utility to have in Castle Nathria, the Alliance uh, was a very tempting offer, and what Exorcist moved over to the Alliance, other guilds raid tested as Alliance, and Blizzard put a stop to it, because they didn't want to see that happen. Maybe they should have let it go, although it would have definitely skewed the Castle Nathria results, because where the big guilds go... Everybody else tends to follow at some point or another, at least with some pace. It might not happen overnight, but it will happen if those guys decide to do that. So maybe that's something they could do. But hopefully not just by making one side overpowered. That wouldn't be very fun for anybody at all, as the rest of the player base simply cannot afford to just swap characters whenever they feel like it. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, love to see your thoughts on this. Bye-bye.